results of uh, overcrowding. So this is really something that r opens up affordable housing for those that uh, may not be related to one another. The Planning Commission heard this item last month and voted unanimously 6-0 to approve a recommendation to the City Council. Are there any questions on this item? Questions or comments on this? Again, trying to conform with the what the state legislature did, okay? We'll go to Francis first. So this, so my question is, I, I know with, the, with how the state's written it, we, we need to move forward with this. Um, where I hear concerns with this within the community is concerns about their neighborhood and the rentals that have been happening and, and the effect that it has on the neighborhood. Um, and so I'm wondering what are things we can do to help preserve neighborhoods in the midst of in the midst of this, obviously we need to to be in compliant. There shouldn't be any discriminatory practices. Um, but what are what are things that can be done? And th and this might be something where you say this needs to be another discussion. Um, but that's that's the piece that I hear is the biggest concern on this is maintaining the the look and feel the neighborhoods. Yes, that's a good question. There still are ordinances in place that, that regulate noise, that regulate litter or parking. Uh, so if those are issues in any neighborhood, whether it's unrelated folks, students, year-round residents, I would encourage them to get a hold of code enforcement. If there are issues regarding life and safety, where perhaps there is a, a dwelling or a structure that is deemed unsafe, uh, feel free to call any of our building inspectors and they can they can go out and take a look at no charge. Okay, thank you. And that again, you said it applies to parking because I know I've seen that in neighborhood very close to me where we had like five people in there and they all had five cars and they only had a two car garage and parking lot. So you can complain if there's a bunch of cars for that one, even though we, the state law. Well, if there, if there is disorderly parking, parking over a sidewalk, parking on the grass, blocking another driveway, if they're parked on the street or in their own driveway or garage, then that would obviously be yeah. reasonable parking. But if they're blocking a mailbox or an, an exit or an entryway, then obviously, you know, get a hold of code enforcement and we can take a look at that. Eileen. You know, neighborhoods are constantly evolving and we, and we do what we can to, uh, to preserve what we like and to, to move forward and make, uh, make changes that seem feasible. I've said this for years, that I didn't think that the state had any business telling people who is a family. And now that this is gone, we can take other measures, perhaps, to make some of these things happen that we want to have happen. But I've said it for decades. The state had no business declaring who is a family. People are their own family. Thank you. Thanks to the state legislature and thanks to the Pullman City Council. Other comments? So, uh, Ann. Yeah, I, I do agree with that, but I also I do want to make sure that our code enforcement is, you know, really on it because we had a few input letters about people in neighborhoods and Mayor Johnson just alluded to it too. I've had it also where is, you know, there's just, um, you know, whether it's parking or noise or whatever. So as long as we can, if we're going to do this when we have to, but I mean, accompany that with increased in enforcement, you know, when necessary, or, you know, inc I guess more um, response is what I'm asking for. Okay, thank you. Becky. Just to echo uh, what uh, Council Member Parks has said, and that I just think code enforcement can only do so much until we just went out and just kind of a warning, I guess, to all of us that this is probably going to mean um, a greater need for, for code enforcement if, if for parking only. Um, just wanted to toss that out there. But also, it also helps in terms of communication with your neighbors. And, I've, <laughs> and I talk to my neighbors and we have a really good working relationship. We've been shoveling snow together, get to know people, and some of them are working for WSU, some are going to school. So I'm getting to know my neighbors this way and, and we don't have a problem right now, so that's great. So, Nathan? I think, um, of course, what Eileen said is, is absolutely 100% agree with that. I think the issue, and this has been brought up before council many, many times, um, 
when Pete was a planner, he was discussing the fact that determining who is in a home, family or non, um, is extremely difficult. And placing that on code enforcement, there's only so much they can do. So I, I think it's important for the council to also understand, even though you see, you know, five cars and you know, there's only supposed to be two people in a home, I mean, that's, that's extremely difficult to enforce. And we really don't have any existing, as far as I know, um, codes to assist with that. And um, so I think we also need to be based in reality on how much we can do regarding that, so. Since all the consuls had a chance to say something, do I hear a motion on this ordinance? Move to adopt. Second. Moved and seconded. And Kendall. Ordinance number 22-10, an ordinance amending Pullman City Code section 17.05.000, 17.75.075, and 10.30.030, and ordinance numbers 21-9, section 1, 2021, 14-12, section 1, 2014, 14-4, section 1, 2014, 03-33, section 1, 2003, 02-32, section 1, 2002, 01-5, section 1, 2001, 00-8, section 1, 2000, 00-3, section 1, 2000, 99-49, section 1, 1999, 96-19, section 1, 1996, 87-9, section 1, 1987, 03-33, section 32, 2003, 99-49, section 4, 1999, and 09-2, Section 4, 2009, and other matters properly related thereto. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? We now move to item number three. It's a resolution authorizing the execution of a ground lease between the city of Pullman and the Friends of Gladish. Here's Clayton Forsman, our Deputy Public Works Director. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, City Council. The, this item consists of a potential ground lease um, between the city and Friends of Gladish, who own and operate the Gladish Community and Cultural Center, located at 115 Northwest State Street. That building location is shown here on, on this slide. You'll see along the north side of the building, that's Olson Street which um, is just adjacent to the north side of the building. Uh, last year, John Ayers, is, who is with us here tonight, uh, he's one of the Gladish Board of Directors, inquired with uh, city staff about this area. So if we kind of zoom in, um, the area shown here highlighted in red is that area uh, along the north side of the building. And then if you uh, look at the in the upper right corner there's a street view of that highlighted area and you can see that area is currently used for off-street parking and for access to the building staff have determined that uh, that area is actually in the Olson Street right-of-way though this space has been used uh, and maintained by Gladish since they acquired the property in 1996 there has been no formal agreement for its use between the city and Gladish. So the item tonight would establish um, an agreement in the form of a ground lease with Gladish to allow their continued use of this space. A ground lease would still protect the city uh, and their right to use this space in the future should the need arise. The ground lease has been prepared and it's included in your packet for your consideration along with a letter from Gladish request requesting this lease. And with that, I'll take any questions. Any questions on this? Don't see any. Oh, okay, we'll go to Eileen first. This is a terrific idea and it should have happened a long time ago. I always worried when I was uh, associated with Gladish and working with the Washington Idaho Symphony, we were always concerned about that emergency exit out of the side of the auditorium there. So if that is solely in Gladish's hands, they will they will take, take good care of it and make capable use out of it and make sure that something's not parked there you know, during a concert or something when something might happen. That was always something that just nagged me in the back of my mind that, uh, 
that the folks at Gladish know how to manage an auditorium, and that was just one little thing that was always just a worry, and now this eliminates that. Yeah. Um, Nathan, do you want to make a comment? Uh, question. So as far as uh, snow removal, um, enforcement, so on and so forth, uh, that would fall on Gladish? Correct. Correct. Okay. Okay. Any other questions or comments? Then do I hear a motion on this resolution? Move to adopt. Second. Move and second. Kendall. Resolution number R-21-22, a resolution authorizing the execution of a ground lease between the City of Pullman and Friends of Gladish. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. And John, thank you for all the hard work that you and the board have been doing on Gladish. I know you've made a lot of improvements. You've got uh, some really good goals, and you've gotten a lot of great grants. And we want to congratulate you because that's, that's going to be one of the, uh, the beautiful things we're going to be showing in Pullman. All the fact that uh, all the friends have been working so hard together to make that facility something that we can all be proud of. So thank you very much. Our next item is a motion to authorize the city administrator to proceed with adding the position of human resources generalist as requested. And we have our HR manager, Heidi Evans. Great. Thank you, Mayor, and thank you, Council, for the opportunity to present an idea that is incredibly exciting for staff and, if approved, would help really elevate the HR department at the City of Pullman to the next level. Uh, tonight, staff is asking for your support to add a permanent full-time position to the HR department and HR generalists. Uh, you have already received information about the job description, current staffing ratios, methods of funding, and comparable budget and staff statistics from other similar organizations to aid in explaining why the need exists and how we plan to fix it. Tonight's staff plan to expand more on the intangibles about what this position would mean to the city department and HR manager. The creation of this position would mean additional capacity so that critical updates to city policies and procedures can occur for the first time in years. The HR manager will have the support needed to shift their main focus to the organization's higher level of needs. Uh, it also provides extra capacity for the HR manager to assist in the software conversion project that is upcoming as well as internal and external end users can expect more expeditious response rates. And the department uh, will also have the capacity to further the objectives of the city administration and staff alike, such as a more thorough uh, wellness program, annual open enrollment benefits fair, and additionally, the department will have more availability to strengthen ties with community stakeholders in hopes of inquiring and retaining local talent. Uh, service was really the driving force behind the creation of this position. The city continues to grow and as a key employer within the community, and the addition of an HR generalist supports the ongoing growth of the organization as an employer, while also addressing the growing needs of staff members within the organization. Before staff turn the request over for your final consideration, time must be taken though to express gratitude to the city team members who assisted me in getting uh, this proposal from concept to where it is today. Uh, Mr. Mike Urban in particular, thank you for your support through the process as well as Sean Coates for digging into the budget and supporting the funding for this critical organizational need. With financials in mind, though, please be advised that the financial information listed in your packet is the projected salary information for the entire year for this position. Uh, there is projected savings already for 2022 since recruitment would start mid-year, and staff, of course, would return towards uh, the end of the year with a budget amendment here should this motion pass. Uh, so thank you so much for the consideration this evening. Are there any questions that I would be happy to answer for you at this time? Questions or comments? Anne, we'll go to you first. Uh, just a comment. I do know that since you've taken this position, it has been just a, an avalanche of work for you um, and, and changing and updating things that hadn't been changed or updated in years by, the, by itself takes a lot. And I, I really commend you for the work you have done. And I have seen the need for um, some additional, uh, another staff person to assist you. So, but I just wanted to commend you on the work you've been doing. Thank you, Anne. Yeah. 
Heidi knew it, but she, you know, when she took over the job, it says, okay, now you got the job. Oh, incidentally, we have all these labor contracts that you have to work <laughs> with. So, I mean, it's been very, very busy for her. And, and we definitely needed some help in that. And, and as the city staff grows. So, mm -hmm. any other yeah. comments or questions? Francis. So, um, I very much support this. Uh, Pullman is, as we transition in our population, as cities do, as they get from that the 25,000 to the 40,000, there's a lot of these changes that happen, and we have to add these additional people. And as and as we're growing, we, we need to keep ahead of it and not get behind and bury our staff. So, uh, this is something that I think is a good plan. Thank you, Francis. Not to mention all the new regulations that come down <laughs> that HR Thanks. needs to be worried about as well. So. Uh, if there's no other comments, do I hear a motion on this? I move to authorize the city administrator to proceed with adding the position of human resources generalist as requested. Second. Move and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you, Heidi. We now go to Deputy Chief Roy Lamoureau for item number five, a motion to accept $15,000 grant award from the Department of Labor and Industries. Yes, money coming from Labor and Industries instead of going out. <laughs> Uh, through the Firefighter Injury and Illness Reduction Program. So, uh, Ray, the floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Good evening, Council. Uh, <clears throat> as you, uh, the, the items that you have in front of you, uh, we started participating in this fire program last spring, uh, brought to us by uh, Miss Heidi there, uh, with the intention to uh, reduce injuries within the fire department. Uh, we didn't know what that was going to entail until we really got into it, and Elle and I wanted to focus on uh, musculoskeletal injuries and uh, carcinogen uh, reduction within the fire stations. Uh, we've done a good job up to this point. Uh, our wellness committee has done a very good job of uh, keeping our firefighters fairly healthy. We do have the occasional injury. We do have some folks out right now on some long-term stuff. Uh, but overall, we've actually done a pretty good job of reducing those musculoskeletal injuries, as well as our carcinogen uh, uh, reduction within the fire stations. Uh, but what we're seeing now is our current exhaust capture system is showing its age. Uh, and the current uh, attachments to the vehicles uh, aren't really staying on while the vehicles are moving in the station. So we're, we're pumping more and more of those carcinogens from the diesel engines into the stations. Uh, this new uh, uh, capture point goes from just having four or five small magnets that hold that capture piece onto the apparatus to a <clears throat> full circumference uh, magnet. In fact, the company that we're going through gave us a, uh, a demo and they failed to give us the cable that goes inside the hose. And so the magnets are so strong that the, uh, the attachment piece came out of the hose at the station and made its way all the way to Palouse and back <coughs> uh, on, the, on the medic unit. So it's, it's definitely something that we need uh, without replacing the entire exhaust capture system. So, like the mayor alluded to, LNI is actually giving us money versus taking it away from us. Uh, and they're, they're offering a $15,000 grant. We do have a match of uh, $5,000, uh, but the fire department does have budgeted money for that particular uh, item to cover our match. So LNI is gonna give us 10,000, we'll match the 15. And what that allows us to do, instead of piecemealing uh, purchasing uh, a few of these uh, capture points this year and some more next year. It allows us just to do it all in one fell swoop uh, and, and knock it out this year versus waiting for next year to really complete the project. So the fire department's looking for council approval to accept the grant. Comments or questions? Eileen. Yeah, thanks for bringing this, Ray. This is kind of personal to me. My father worked in the automobile industry and the effect on him of sucking up exhaust fumes for decades and decades and decades. Yeah, <laughs> this, it, I, I, yeah, I can't express it. This is so, so important. And uh, yeah, if we can get a little bit of money out of Al and I, all the better. Do I hear a motion on this? Move to adopt. Second. 
We have a motion and a second to accept a $15,000 grant from the Department of Labor and Industries through the Firefighter Injury and Illness Reduction Program. All those in favor, signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay. Thank you. Thank you, Ray. Our last item is a discussion item. It comes from Jennifer Hackman, our Economic Development Director. And it's a request to appoint a council member to the marketing panel. And as you, you discuss this one, remember how many different committees you're on so we can work this one out. Okay, Jennifer. Thank you, Mayor. Good evening, Council. Uh, this item is a follow-on to City Council's approval to move forward with an economic development marketing blueprint in January. So we're at a point where we have very closely negotiated and are really close to signing a contract with an agency. And um, together with the mayor's help and also with the city administrator's help, we have put together an implementation plan. And part of that plan involves creating a stakeholder panel really to um, enable a good discussion of things like who are the industries that we want to target, what are the audiences. Um, this group would work with our agency and with city staff to make recommendations about those kinds of items as well as review any of the marketing messaging, any of the campaigns, be involved in the web design, that kind of thing. So the idea here is really to have a diverse group of stakeholders in the community that would represent marketing and economic development colleagues or small businesses. And I think it's really important um, that a council member be part of that. You would receive as a body monthly reports about the progress and it would be my intention to come to council before any final decisions would be made about who are the targets, who are the audiences. Um, but this panel would enable me to come to you kind of with that understanding that the community has weighed in and stakeholders have weighed into that. So tonight, I'm just asking um, if you would be so kind as to appoint one of your body to join that panel. I will say, I think it'll be exciting. I think it's gonna be really fun. It is gonna be work <laughs> and minimum monthly meeting, but it, it could be that we meet a little more than that, especially at the very beginning, and there might be some homework. <laughs> but um, that said, it's, it's, it's an, an important panel, and so I look forward to um, hearing from you and would be happy to answer any questions. First of all, questions or comments? Okay, uh, we'll go to Megan first and then we'll go to Nathan. Well, I agree it's an exciting uh, piece of work ahead of us and probably a lot of work. Um, I just wanna throw in that I do have a, a keen interest in serving on this just because um, my interest in economic development and my background in marketing. So it, it seems like something that I could maybe contribute to. Okay, Nathan. Yeah, I actually uh, was going to nominate Megan. So you kind of took it out of, because you are the expert on our council in that area. Um, however enticing it is to me, you're the you know expert. So I would absolutely support Megan. I, I Francis have, was, uh, and I see <laughs> Becky is nodding forward too. Okay. I would support Megan, yes. Uh, Ann or, Okay. See, the matter is taken care of. So thank you very much for nominating yourself and a lot of support from the council. Okay. okay. Thank you All very right. much. And, we'll, <laughs> and now you have the homework. Okay. Any new business to come before the council tonight? Seeing none, do I see a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second. Moved and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Any opposed? 